It's September 20th, 2017, and I'm on Thomas Street uh, outside St. Catherine's Church. And the reason for that is that today is the anniversary of the execution of Robert Emmett. Robert Emmett led the um, rising of 1803 and was executed on this spot in the aftermath of that rising. Uh, in fact, they built a platform just here um, on the street. Uh, I'll insert a photograph that shows that platform. Uh, surrounded it with soldiers and he was hung and then beheaded on this spot. Um, his original sentence uh, was to be hung, drawn and quartered, uh, particularly barbaric form of execution the British Empire used, uh, in which you were hung until you passed out. You were then revived. Uh, you were then, uh, if it was the full method, you were then drawn, which meant they cut a hole, small hole in your stomach, and then they pulled out your entrails, all the while keeping you conscious. Uh, and they then proceeded to cut off your limbs with an axe uh, before you were beheaded, which finally killed you. So. This was a very barbaric, ritualized form of execution um, developed by the British monarchy uh, in order to intimidate anybody who might want to challenge their power. Uh, now, in fact, with the Emmett execution, as far as I'm aware, uh, it was somewhat more humane than that. He was hung uh, and, and uh, died while being hung, and he was then beheaded. Um, and uh, among other myths is that uh, his head was uh, thrown down Bridgefoot Street, which we're looking down. Now, the site of execution here, uh, there's two reasons why it's here. One is that most of the events of the rebellion happened on Thomas Street, which we're looking down. Um, but the other reason is that the core of the rebellion in Dublin, which was made up of artisans and laborers, uh, was actually drawn from this district, uh, which is called the Liberties, in behind the church. Um, so this site was chosen to intimidate the population here. Um, the 1803 rebellion, much like the 1916 rebellion, uh, was one where there was a relatively elaborate plan that you could be argued would have had a chance of success, but events conspired against the plan being fully enacted, and so all that happened was, uh, was some aspects of it. Uh, similar to 1916, the intention was to seize key buildings in Dublin um, and to hold those while the rest of the country rose. Uh, in the case of the 1803 rebellion, the target was Dublin Castle, which is just a little bit past the bottom of Thomas Street here. Um, another aspect that's similar to 1916 was that part of the reason the rebellion uh, was limited was because the amount of arms that had been promised uh, to people who were going to rebel failed to materialize. In, in 1916, of course, that's because the German submarine uh, carrying the arms um, when they landed Roger Casement, he was arrested. So the large arms shipment due to arrive didn't arrive. Um, in 1803, uh, they were manufacturing gunpowder in this area, and one of the munitions factories uh, exploded, killing uh, somebody involved. And that obviously alerted the authorities. So the decision was to go ahead uh, with the rebellion ahead of schedule. Um, now, the rebels in Wicklow, who'd been resisting since 1798, in fact, um, went keen on that as a plan and they didn't rise so that was uh, greatly weakened the rebellion thomas russell who had traveled to the north in the hope of getting the presbyterians up there to rise again uh, also failed to get them out uh, and in fact he was also executed in the aftermath of the rebellion um, there are two plaques marching the site uh, the first one which i think might be an older one uh, tells us incorrectly that uh, Emmett was executed on the 21st of September. Um, but there is also this uh, plinth, which I would presume is actually um, intended for a statue to be erected on. It has the look of something you'd put a statue on top, and that's missing. And that tells us the date of 20th of September. Uh, it reads, Robert Emmett died in the cause of Irish freedom on 20th of September. 1803 outside this church, uh, erected by Dublin Corporation in 1978. Um, and as you can see, there's a single red rose uh, laid at the base of the pillar. I put that there earlier myself. Um, on the 200th anniversary, uh, 
there was an official commemoration on the site. I'll see if I can find some photos I took of that. Uh, and among other things, they'd actually brought out what was reputed to be the butcher's block that uh, Emmett's head was chopped off on. Um, the rising itself, um, there's a few interesting features of it. One is that one of the innovations they made was uh, they made pikes where the shaft of the pike had a hinge on it. And the purpose of that was so that it could be folded and hidden under a coat. And what the 1803 rebellion was successful for was that it managed to maintain its secrecy until close to the end. Most previous rebellions, of course, having been betrayed well in advance. Um, the, in order not to get the authorities uh, alarmed on the day of the rising, the rebels were told to meet up in the pubs in this area, uh, so there wouldn't be large congregations in the streets. Uh, the disadvantage of that, of that, of course, was that people drank, um, and uh, the actual time of the rebellion got postponed a couple of times, uh, which probably meant at least some of the rebels were much drunker than they should have been. Um, the rebellion itself didn't, I mean, didn't really have much of a substantial military side. It was more of a riot by the time it took place. Uh, there was a, a British dragoon, dragoon um, was uh, killed on Thomas Street. She was piked to death. Uh, but also, in fact, the uh, then Lord Chief Justice um, was pulled out of his coach uh, as the rebels marched down the street here towards Dublin Castle. Now. It's often portrayed that he was a bit of a liberal, and so that killing didn't make a lot of sense. But in fact, he was also the judge who had sentenced William Orr to death in 1797. Um, yeah. At that point, uh, after the, the judge had been killed, Emmett then called off the rebellion. Uh, rioting continued for a while, and then the crowd dispersed. Um, in the aftermath, as well as uh, Thomas Emmett and... Robert Emmett and Thomas Russell being executed, uh, 15 artisans and laborers, uh, nearly all from this locality were also executed. I'm not quite sure of their execution site, but I believe it may well have been here as well as they were, uh, as there's a plaque uh, around the back of the church that actually commemorates them. Um, St. Catherine's here was, a, St. Catherine's here was here in, 98 uh, and 1803, uh, you know, the building is that old. Most of the rest of the Thomas Street has probably gone. The only other interesting aspect uh, that can be said is that just as you look down the street towards the corner, um, not sure we can quite see it from here, but there's a there's a, 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 center, or a center or spa, I'm not quite sure which down there, uh, but over that was the site of the Irish Socialist Republican Party, which was uh, Connolly's uh, Socialist Party that existed in the run-up to 1916. Um, and in fact, if you look the other way up the street, which will bring you up past Guinnesses, uh, there's a fountain further up there, and that fountain is one of the locations that Connolly used to regularly have street meetings on. Um, so that's the history today, the anniversary of Robert Emmett's execution.